everybody. We all sometimes think that we cannot change the world, but I say that is not true at all. You can look around right now and say, wow, we really do make a difference by voting with our dollars and not voting for politicians. You can see it uh, recently with uh, State Farm losing a lot of business from their promotion of school books to make kids think about other adult things other than being kids. You see it with uh, Netflix recently. You see it with other places in the in the broader world where people are starting to use their own uh, cotton bags to go grocery shopping instead of using paper or plastic, you know, the reusable things like that, trying uh, this push for hemp to be used and making so many other items that would eliminate a lot of plastics in the world. There are ways that we can impact the world no matter what your belief system. I think everybody universally wants clean air. I think everybody universally wants good, clean water without being polluted with chemicals and the recycling of all of the uh, pharmaceutical drugs everybody takes that it, uh, finds itself in a uh, test of water, especially in bigger cities. Nobody wants dirty water. Nobody wants um, to live in a place that's not safe. No one wants to walk down big city streets and be accosted by criminals and drug abusing homeless people when we could not send so much money overseas and just insist that money is invested in places that can actually help people improve their lives and, and fight uh, and overcome addictions. We can do these things pretty quickly. You can see it with uh, just the examples of uh, recent businesses that have suffered by people going, eh, I don't think so. I'm not supporting you. And it is something that we've been talking about here this morning and uh, from the mystics of Texas. So thank you for joining us. Me and Trey and our two friends, Gil and uh, Eric, are glad y'all are here with us. Mr. Schmidt, I know that you have something to say about supporting businesses that promote uh, the welfare and not the destruction of humanity. Well, I've always been a fan of voting with your dollars. I always think that we have this median of money that we use and we always complain about things that could go right in the world or things that we want to go right. We can start out by promoting companies and people that we like their agenda. For instance, Coca-Cola is one of the bad ones. You know, they go into any town and they take all the water from whatever town it is. Then they have to pay, the people who live in that town have to pay for their water back from Coca-Cola. It was the people's water and they stole all the water and they contaminated it with all their fluoride and everything else they put into their soft drinks. They pollute with all the plastics they make from their bottling corporation. And then they send it out mostly to advertising to kids and that they get these huge heart problems and obesity problems and everything else that goes along with drinking sugar. Everybody should know that that's bad for you. So let's look at companies that do a better job that you can give your money to them. Let's look at companies that you feel safe giving your money to because you know a little bit about the company. If you're going to spend money with someone, wouldn't it behoove you just to do a little research into these products? For example, there's a lot of companies around here that you would think their biggest basis are people that tote guns. But there are companies like Yeti, for one, that is anti-Second Amendment. When you would think that they should spend money because that's their core group of people that buy their products. But they don't. So if you like your Second Amendment and you like guns and you like to have those freedoms that they allow you, then you should not support companies that do those things because those companies have zero dollars of their own. That's something very important that I don't think anybody realizes. It's like, oh, well, Coke's a giant or this company is a giant. You can't take them down. But they don't actually have any money 
they need you to give them money and then they take your money and they use it for all their nefarious purposes. But alone, they don't have any money. They rely on you to give them money. They only have products, they have inventory, but they need your money to promote their agenda. And they can buy their politicians with that. They can go buy land and rape it of its resources with that money. And it's a simple solution. You stop it and you talk to other people that you're friends, family, and you tell them why you don't support these specific topics of this company. And you say, all right, well, if you don't believe me, well, why don't you look into it? Well, here's a town that in India where you can see that Coca-Cola has raped the resources and now they're holding everyone in a village hostage for water. Easy solution is just do a little bit of research. Think about the next time you are making a big purchase and you're looking at Amazon or eBay or all these companies and you're searching for the best deal to get $5 off of this or $5 off of that and you'll spend hours doing research. But then you don't do any research into the company of what they're going to do with your money after you give it to them. It doesn't make any sense. People will spend hours or they'll drive across town to get a better deal on their next iPhone without knowing anything about Apple's practices. They had suicide nets around many of their factories that kept people from jumping out of their factories. Or you go on the other hand with Nike. Nike has horrible practices in Indonesia where they work for 11 hours a day and they get paid something around less than two or three dollars. And they have continuous shifts where they can't have any breaks. You know, there's women that are on their periods and they put a cloth over their front because they don't see where the blood's coming out. I mean, these companies do these practices and it doesn't take a lot of individual research to go out and look for them. So if you don't like that brand, find another brand that's suitable. And if that brand changes their practices, then you can go back and support that brand. But you need to first open up your mind and think that you can make a difference. And these are the ways how you make a difference. Man, I love what you just said. And it makes you, uh, well, being on this primary platform, even though we are on all the alternatives to YouTube, Rumble, BitChute, a lot of the other ones, but uh, YouTube being one, you can't uh, criticize their parent company because then all of a sudden you'll get lost on the algorithm or you'll be canceled or uh, you'll be erased. And so when you want to go search for companies and their practices, their censorship, their lack thereof, uh, you got to be real careful because there are certain search engines out there that will limit what you can find. So you have to go think of what it is, uh, what other engines are available <coughs> that can allow you to. You okay, Eric? <laughs> Water got me wrong too. That's okay. We uh, you have to start thinking about everything that we use and we use and consume information. And so if we are utilizing uh, information in our searches, then we better make sure that uh, whatever platforms that we're using allow us to get the most information because freedom only comes with more information. The more information, the truth will always tend to bubble up. And, and so you have to have the ability to find out what happens in uh, companies and people that we support with our dollars so that we can make educated decisions to say, hey, I, I'm not going to support that. I don't support Buffalo Wild Wings in the South because I heard that they mm -hmm. were anti-Second Amendment um, or any other company. You, know, you may be pro or against, say whatever. If you're pro or against, it seems like you would want to make the world uh, better in your perspective from supporting companies that support what you believe in. And that is a much better way, in my opinion, to vote because you never know what you're going to get with a politician and who, are, who has bought them behind the scenes. But is a much more direct way of going about changing the world instead of going and trying to just local politician, which you know their campaign is funded by these corporations, which is another good point. You can look on almost anybody's list of who funded that candidate, and you can see who is actually pulling the strings. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and talk about really making an impact really fast. And it makes you more aware of what's going on in the world instantly, whenever you start doing a little bit of research on uh, where your products are coming from that you need, or, you know, you need blue jeans, uh, you need t-shirts, you need uh, underwear, uh, you know, find out uh, who has the best practices, who has the, uh, who is apolitical, who, who is not apolitical, so that you can make a decision, because what we're doing is sending ourselves uh, straight into a uh, lake of fire and brimstone, if you will, uh, because uh, we don't know who and what we're supporting, whatever we're supporting sweatshops and uh, slave labor, because we go, golly, I really need uh, this new pair of underwear, and it's you know only a, a few bucks at uh, Costco or Sam's, and... But what we don't think about is that we're enslaving other people around the world by our our practices. And we've all been responsible for that. Uh, I say all, the vast majority of us in this country at least. But it's time that we start really paying attention so we can cut out a lot of these practices that make the human condition worse for everybody. What do you think, Gil? <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's very important to educate yourself. I think it's very important to do your own research uh, and to, to really uh, see what is influencing us, what is impacting us, how it is operating, and um, really, really navigate and sense and resonate. Uh, most importantly, I would recommend to center yourself in the heart. Um, because the heart is the center of perception and navigation. Uh, it is the hub. Uh, um, as we go into research, we will realize that um, all of those uh, organizations and operations and behaviors and patterns are, are, are coming from our ego mind. Uh, and um, so for those that uh, are already in that process, Go ahead, do what you need to do. For those that are really looking, I know a lot are very confused, very, uh, very much want to do something, but don't know where to start. I would just say, start with listening to your heart. Start with anchoring yourself in the heart. Start with breathing to your heart, listening to your heart. Start with finding love within yourself and compassion and understanding within yourself, for yourself first, and then Naturally, allow that to guide you. Uh, what? How do you want to be active in the world? How do you want to make a difference? What do you really want to support? There is a choice. There is a free will that it is right now uh, we are catalyzed to start to activate. Um, and this is really always a, a choice. Um, what are you supporting? Uh, where do you get your information? Um, and to begin to live from the heart, for me, from my perspective, uh, it is probably one of the key ingredients in, in, into becoming uh, an activist that can come forth with that central uh, core energy to start to see how do you want to position yourself and also be activist outside. Start with the activism within uh, and then go and see how do you want to apply it and let it spill over to the outside. Uh, that would be uh, my recommendation. Man, I think that is a fantastic starting point you know, because how do you know who to support and who don't? How do you even know where to go in that thought process unless you first look at yourself and what your core values are. And until you do that, well, you might as well just support everybody who's polluting and harming and doing everything anyway, because you don't even know what you're for or against. And, and that is a very valid uh, and, and to me, a very important starting place. You have to look inside. And I think everything, uh, no matter really what the topic is, 
you have to look inside first and everything begins here. I think that's true, but also I think everyone wants the same things. I think we all want things to be sustainable. A lot of times, like when I started giving up meat, people are like, oh, well, you're going to be a liberal now. So, you know, if you really think about it, having a sustainable source of food is not a liberal issue at all. That's more of a conservative issue. Do you know any liberal preppers? Zero. They want a sustainable source of food. Those are the conservatives. Those are the people that are, quote, crazy, but they, if something goes wrong, they have it. So why wouldn't we want to do the same thing on a large scale? We want to have resources for our lifetime and everybody's lifetime. So when we think about the meat industry is a great one, or the paper industry. Let's start with the paper industry. We have paper that has been made for about a century that's been made out of trees. It takes 30 years to make paper out of trees. Hemp, three months. Just off the back of that, which one seems more sustainable? In this country, we have food. Look at a chicken in the size, mm -hmm. a size of a chicken in the 1950s as opposed to a size of a chicken now. Six weeks, they're from hatchling to on a plate, and they're huge birds. We want to think that there's all these hormones and things that are put into chicken. Well, that's not necessarily true. We have bred these chickens just through selective breeding to get this big. They have to be raised indoors. The whole free range chicken market is a huge scam. There's a lot of really interesting documentaries you can watch. Super Size Me Too, Morgan Spurlock. He's a guy that went in and basically showed how bad McDonald's was for you for eating it for a month. He did an in-depth study on the chicken industry and that there's only big chicken. That's where you get all this chicken from. You think that there's a lot of these local farmers. Well, there's a lot of people that are raising chicken for big chicken and it's not sustainable at all. So what do you do about that? Well, maybe you want to have a little yard and you raise a couple of chickens and you figure out how to eat them. You go to the source of the problem. And we realize that when you look inside, the source of everything is we're all humans and we all basically want the same things. I think that is, you're right, but most people don't recognize, uh, let's say the chicken thing, uh, because there are, uh, classifications of what is free range. You know, you got this little bitty tiny spot, so it makes everybody, oh, I feel so much better. This chicken got, you know, this three feet to roam around. Uh, and that is about what it is, three feet. <laughs> and, and so, but then you say, I, I want, <clears throat> which I think is a valid point. I, I think most people should visit uh, farms more on a regular basis because people don't understand when, where their life is being sustained in their bag of flesh. Uh, everybody likes to eat, uh, but are you going to go kill that chicken? Are you going to have the, uh, the wherewithal to go look at that life, kill it, and then eat it? I mean, you're supporting uh, that no matter what you're doing. You're supporting the death of that animal, whether it's beef, whatever, no matter what uh, what type of meat it is. So whenever we we think of that, like what are we doing? And I think food is a great example because now we're talking about uh, mass slaughter and mass uh, just evil. I mean, I mean, these beef and chicken houses are absolutely horrific. And what do we do? We go out and support them nonstop, nonstop. Everybody is going out and supporting mm -hmm. them, and we say we hate it, but yet we don't. We don't hate it enough to stop it. So then, where do you got to go? You got to go to what Gil says. You got to look inside. All right, what am I supporting? Do I really hate it? No, I don't really hate it because I keep doing it. Uh, it's kind of like me. I have this issue with uh, GMO foods and things that have pesticides and, and all these uh, chemicals. Everything I buy for my home is organic the best I possibly can. But what do I do once a week? I like to go out to a Mexican restaurant that I know GMO chips, GMO salsa, 
the most horrible in, uh, processed chemicals and foods than I ingested into my body. I do it once a week. So I must not hate it that much. Like I must have this, uh, this personal death and destruction I want to do to myself because I continue to practice it. And then I get mad at myself every time, especially lately, the past six months or so. I'm like, okay, Kevin, you've had enough of this. You know, like I, like you look in the mirror, and I've been doing it a lot lately. I'm like, are you ever going to stop? Like, what, what is your problem here? You know, you're supporting Monsanto and Bear and, and all these. You know, you're doing that. It's an issue that you have to. We all collectively have to wake up and discover what it, what are we doing. Who are these big companies that we're supporting? Why are we addicted to them? Well, they've taken a lot of pains to make sure we are addicted to their products and we see their products. They spend a lot of money marketing their products. They're at eye level in the grocery stores. And the foods that are marketed the best, the ones that you see the most often, are the ones that you eat the most often. Marketing works. It works. I've been listening to our conversation up until this point. And I'm impressed by the importance of the various things that have been said. Some of them have been very focused on corporate practices or food, or do I follow through with my commitment to purity and still go to McDonald's or a Mexican restaurant once a week? One thing that hasn't been addressed, and I'll back up for a second here. My impression, what we're all about here, this panel and what the work that Kevin's doing, Trey's doing, Gil, myself, is to make a positive difference in the world. They're sharing ideas, we're sharing ideas, which we think have value. Wanting to stimulate you, the viewer, and our friends to do something different. But what hasn't been mentioned is exactly what we're doing here. It's not one person who's talking to you. We have four different people. And you get four different points of view. I have never met any person, male, female, young or old, who's absolutely 100% right 100% of the time. I've never met anyone who's absolutely 100% wrong 100% of the time. So what's so important in our coming together, I get to listen to you and you and Gil and so forth, and I say, okay, do I agree with them, disagree with them? Yes, sometimes. Sometimes, I don't know, I've never even thought about that. But the stimulation, the cross-fertilization between our minds, heart, mind, and soul, of what can occur when we come together in a small group and talk honestly. And what I would suggest to everyone, in addition to the choice of do I support McDonald's or not, or Coca-Cola, or do I go to distilled water or something else, just as important is to get a group of your neighbors together to do what we're doing. Talk with your neighbors, exchange ideas, set up a few rules and guidelines about, this is not about convincing someone that your way is right, and that's the only way that's right, but to hear other people's points of view, give yourself a chance to integrate it and see what might creatively come out of it. Yeah, that is a great thing that we were missing, so thank you, Eric, I really appreciate that. And that is uh, one of the ways that we get to um, learn is and to learn like these subjects for example we're talking about today uh, Trey might know information that I don't know but being his older brother that's probably not true <laughs> <laughs> and, and Gil uh, and, and Gil uh, knows things and brings things to the table that uh, for instance this talk I wasn't uh, thinking about looking at my heart first. I'm just thinking about we should look at everybody we do business with. And Gil nailed it and brought it right home for me. Uh, and, and Trey with his points on beef. I, I really wasn't thinking about uh, meat today either in this conversation. So you're right, Eric, that it, it does require us to get together in groups because it's refreshing. Humans are social. We, we need that uh, fellowship and companionship and uh, and laughs and smiles and hugs and and not go into conversations with uh, predisposed uh, and, and preformed walls around our mind 
you know, we're, we're, we're all breathing the same air and we might as well uh, figure out ways to enjoy each other's company and learn from each other the best we can. Exactly. Kevin, I'd make a point here. You mentioned Gill's reference to the art, and then you brought that in, said it provided a new avenue for you to contend, to look into what's happening here. One of, the, <clears throat> one of the things I know from personal experience working with small groups and facilitating part of my community building activity is that we can, when we come together, not only as we access our own individual heart, the more people in the group who are doing that practice, there is a, for lack of a better word, a collective heart that starts to develop, emerge, comes forth. And that collective heart, collective mind, collective soul, however you want to phrase it, has an even greater potential for truth and love manifestation. So yes to the individual heart, yes to the individual mind, annoying things here, there, other people know some, some don't. And yet the sharing of those, the melding of those with the commitment to learn, to pretend that I know everything, was one of the deadliest mistakes I could make. And I come together and meet you guys, and there's an opportunity to enrich my heart, to enrich my mind, to enrich my soul, and enrich my contribution to the planet. Yeah, that's really good stuff. Uh, and I think it's like uh, Napoleon Hill's Laws of Success, when we're talking about it, when you just mentioned a collective uh, heart, I think of it the same way, and that concept first uh, was introduced to me by Napoleon Hill's Laws of Success when he started talking about the mastermind. Because as I've gotten older, I understand that the mastermind isn't just about the mind, it's about the entire individual and that individual and that energy that's in front of you. Now you're in front of it and it's marrying together. And then you get this group and all of a sudden it creates its own form and and you, and you start to, uh, it becomes its own thing. Right. Right. And that is that is true. So no matter if you believe in the uh, whole melting together and the collective heart consciousness, it's, it's really difficult to argue the fact of a mastermind, which includes the heart. And, and those are really uh, wonderful. If you're in a positive situation, uh, that can be a really good good thing for everybody to discover truth for themselves. My, my experience time and time again, is that we have only really two enemies in life, ignorance and fear. Ignorance is lack of knowledge. Fear is the thing that will keep us closed down tight, make it harder to gain more knowledge. And fear is the exact opposite of love. So if you and I practice on opening our hearts and sitting together, the mind becomes clearer too. We get more and more knowledge. And it's positive, we're searching for positive knowledge to make a difference, to make this world better make our lives better individually, me personally, for you, for you, for you, and everyone out there. It's, uh, for me, a sacred journey. Yeah, and the sacred journey in this conversation is, is to voting into how do we make the world better by voting with our dollars. And part of that is bringing together this uh, master mind and a master heart, a master energy, and then we can discover in those conversations, what other people know and what I don't know. And those are just fantastic things, you know, because I really didn't think about uh, where my underwear came from and, and was I causing someone to uh, being forced to work in a, uh, in a slave shop, you know, somewhere in Vietnam or anywhere in Indonesia, China, wherever. You know, you don't think about that being in... Uh, well, the vast majority of people don't think about those sets of circumstances. So they think, wow, is me wearing, wearing this underwear causing someone else to suffer? And, uh, <laughs> you know, the answer is more than likely yes. Uh, and then, you know, everybody brings up their own points that really require us, require us to be conscious of our decisions. Because if we say, hey, I want to have a, a big master heart, a big mastermind group and, and get together. But then we're all uh, talking about, uh, as my friend Ayala says over there, she introduced me to the word woo-woo or woo or whatever it is. That is a, uh, I think people get around, they talk about a bunch of nothing. 
And so if we don't talk about a bunch of nothing, we talk about, hey, we really can change a difference. We can make a big difference and change this world just how we focus our, our dollars uh, without having to even worry about uh, voting. That, that's a that's a powerful thing, and, and I'm grateful that I, I have a, a brother and uh, a new friend here, and my very good friend Gil, who I love and adore, is uh, it, it's important. These things are important. We're glad that uh, all of y'all are joining us, and I, I'm just thrilled that we can make people understand how powerful you are as an individual. The individual is really, really powerful. You think Coke or McDonald's or Monsanto or Bear or any of these places would not be harmed by uh, the lack of your few dollars. Well, you know, just take a look. Take a look at what's happened recently to Netflix and State Farm and uh, and so many others. Uh, all it takes is one. A big snowball effect happens in a hurry. Anything else to add, gentlemen? I just thought. I think one of the good things in doing a discussion like this is at times to be purposely contrary. Yes. <laughs> so what I want to do lovingly is to challenge you and say about the underwear. And yes, there may be somebody in Indonesia where you're having a certain brand of underwear or the shirts you have on. Sure. Whatever the clothes. Their quality of life has been degraded some amount. On the other hand, <clears throat> I suspect you wouldn't be as comfortable sitting here completely nude and naked and making this video. You wouldn't have your money for making the video, which reaches out potentially to thousands of people. Uh, there's a decision point. How far do you or how far do I go in uh, choosing or being aware of what degree of underwear discomfort in the world exists versus the contribution I can make to the world? by making sure I have shoes on, clothes, so I can walk here. Oh, your point is well taken, because it's something uh, like a dressing in the, uh, uh, like to eat Mexican food and support uh, GMO foods. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, the same thing. Like, what is the line for me? I, I'm, I've gotten to the point in my life where it, it's, it's valuable to me now. I see the world in this horrible situation, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm really contributing to this. So what is my line? You know, like I, we have these cameras set up around here and I'm thinking, all right, well, where were these made? I don't know. I don't know. What were, uh, you know, you hear these reports about Apple and their, uh, and their you know, supposedly former practices. I don't know that for sure. I haven't been there and seen them. Uh, you hear all these reports uh, of Coke. I don't know if they reformed themselves or not. Uh, I suspect that they haven't, uh, nor has probably Nike when they had that famous 60 Minutes uh, expose on them. And all of this comes down to what am I willing to do personally? I don't fully know the answer to that. I, I, I feel like uh, I'm, I'm conscious of it. I do everything in my power to supply my home and friends and family that visit me with good, clean products the best I can. And then I still think, well, I know Apple has some issues. I know Nike has some issues, but boy, I sure do like to run on my treadmill with my Nike shoes. <laughs> and I sure do like Apple over Android, even though they're primarily made in the same factories, you know, with some slight differences. Uh, you know, what is my line? You know, I go to, I look inside my heart, like Gil says, and I'm like, Man, this makes my heart feel a little dull and gray. Like, like this is bad. Well, I would like to comment on your choice, uh -huh. your word choice. Right. I think one of the big deciding factors of this video and one thing that I would like to get across is for people to make a choice, not to be brainwashed by the marketing of these companies for you as a person to have a choice because you said, what is your choice? Most people never consider their choice. They see a price point and they see a product. They don't ever go in depth and think about how or why the products they use are being made. So I think to actually give yourself a choice is the first step to understand why you're buying it. And you say you wouldn't be comfortable doing this or doing that. 
Well, that necessarily may not be true. You might be willing to pay more for something. Tom's shoes is a great example. I personally don't like their shoes, but they got really big and the guy made tons of money because he said, when I make a pair of shoes, I will donate a pair of shoes. Hmm. People caught on to that and they really liked it. Now, could his quality be as good as Nike's? Yes, with a lot less damage to the environment and the whole soul of humanity. Once you start finding companies that you like, that will do these practices that agree with you, then you can change the world through your dollars, much like Tom Shoes. There's a whole bunch of other companies that do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So your choice is very important, but you shouldn't be given your choice or brainwashed into your choice because there's a BOGO sale on Nikes. You can <laughs> say, I don't like them, I don't like this company, but what are my alternatives? Most people don't consider their alternatives, so they don't even give themselves a choice. What I want people to do is to realize they have a choice. They realize they have the money. They have the means to do that. These companies do not have any money. They feed you your choices, but you really have the money, and you really have the choice, so all the people that have the money can make the rules. We have to remember they don't have it. We have to give it to them. We can change it just by voting for what we want. Tom Shoes is a great example. There's a lot of other companies like that. Well, I like, well, I like all of that. I, and that's part of the fun of being together and, and examining things. You know, uh, Socrates was, uh, I think, pretty, pretty correct. The unexamined life is not worth living. That's <laughs> probably, uh, he ain't too far off the mark with that one. And... Uh, so everybody, thank y'all very much for joining us. We are at the mysticsoftexas.com. And Gil's uh, website, if I get it wrong, the peopleoftheReal.com. 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 That is fantastic. And Eric, what is your website? Mariposa Group dot or Mariposa Spanish for butterfly. Mariposa Group dot org. Fantastic. Well, thank y'all. And of course, me and Trey. The fantastic Wonder Twin Powers, mysticsoftexas.com. And there you have it. And have a good day.